Uh, happy for the guys, you know, to get a comfortable win at home. Uh, wanted to keep a shutout. Still nervous in the in the 80th minute, up three goals uh, against this team because of what's happened in the past. Um, so never felt comfortable until the until the final whistle blew. I think the last 10 minutes of the game was the hardest. I feel like I coached in terms of uh, yelling and and keeping the guys going. Um, again, happy. A lot of good performances. Um, you know, that's. You know, even though we lost in D.C., I think that was a good performance. This is four good, strong showings in a row. Um, you know, I think something special is is starting to happen. Uh, again, it's still uh, only four games in, that we've put together, but we need to, to keep it going with, uh, in a lot of ways, a, a good thing to have a quick turnaround and get in New York City because we're, uh, you know, we're in a good good way right now. Um, great for our fans to come out on a on a Wednesday night and, and, and really cheer us on. Uh, I, I thought it was uh, loud. You know, they, they pushed us. Um, they were behind us from the opening uh, whistle, uh, you know, and, and we're kind of that, that 12th man for us. So, again, uh, thanks to the fans that came out. It was a, a good atmosphere on a on a Wednesday night game. Uh, and, and, you know, one that I thought we started a little slow. Um, they had some, you know, new, new faces on the field. Uh, Took a little bit of a feeling out process, but uh, I think as the first half started to go around the 25th to 30th minute, we started to, to, to put a mark on the game, um, created some chances, got the goal. CJ made a good good hard run in the box. I thought the goal was a, a good build up. Um, best thing we've done and accomplished in the in the past four games has is, is been the, you know, we haven't been able to maintain a high pressure uh, style like I'd like to for 90 minutes. But the one thing we've instituted is in. When we're attacking uh, in the attacking half, the the first five seconds when we do lose the ball, to immediately try and win it back. If we don't, then we'll step back and drop it. But we've been able to to pick off a lot of balls uh, in that five second period and, and get at teams. So I was proud of that. The guys have executed uh, well and uh, put in a really good performance. Questions for Jim? Um, this is the second game in three yeah. times that CJ's come on and immediately made an impact. Is he an option given the like regardless of the fitness of the other forwards? Yeah. To start? Yeah, I mean uh, we have competition at, at the forward spot. CJ's been excellent. Uh, he came in tonight and, and really held up a ton of balls. Even the little plays like the the end, they're wasting time with the the corner. He, he has a way of when he collides with people, he always comes out with the ball uh, at his foot. Um, you know. The little twists and turns with the outside of his foot. He he wrong foots defenders a lot, and he's a guy you don't like to play with. You know, uh, excuse me, play against. I should say you you love to play with. You love to have on your team. Uh, his timing on his head balls, winning the goal kicks, uh, the, so huge to have uh, guys run off him. Um, proud that he got the goal, but I I enjoy a lot of the the little nuances that he brings to the, to the table. And he has a speed threat. He's deceptively fast too. He can get in behind. So uh, he's a handful. You know, he's pushing for a, you know, to to. To get into the the starting starting lineup. So when we looked at the, the starting lineups as yeah. at the seven o'clock games, you uh -huh. were the only manager who didn't make substitutions, yep. even with injuries and suspensions aside. Yeah. Can you just you know talk about the yeah you for that? sure? I mean, so you know if you're comparing the the two teams, Columbus obviously is is coming from a a game in Orlando uh, in the heat where there's a red card in the in the 16th minute. So their whole you know, the way they had to push that game. Uh, when you look at these variables, there's a ton of things that go into it. I thought my group had a, a tough game in D.C. Uh, against a very good team, but one there I thought we had a good performance and I wanted to give them a, another run. We didn't have travel. We had to get on a bus and go an hour and a half, to, excuse me, two hours um, from D.C. So, um, you know, I think a lot gets made about the three games in a week in our league. The biggest factor is the travel factor. If you have to get on a flight, and, and fly three hours plus, two hours plus, you have to go to Portland and come back. That's when the, the those games really weigh on you. When you're able to sleep in your own bed like we're going to be able in the next two, I think it's a it's not as drastic. Um, you know, you look all over Europe, I know we're not I'm not comparing us to top teams in Europe, but they play three games a week quite often. They're able to handle it, you know. Um, our athletes we have ath we have good athletes and, and we have uh masseuses and they take care of their bodies and nutritionists eating right sleeping right it all goes into it um, and we made the decision for this one we th thought we had a good thing going and we wanted to, to roll them out there so maybe we get a you know we, we do catch them timing wise where they're maybe you know um, resting guys so to speak I don't know I can't I can't speak for Greg I don't know if he was resting them or what but they put a lot into their game against Orlando um, we knew that would be a factor again down a man they were for 70 plus minutes so 
Uh, everybody's situation's different. You know, there's breaks that go on during the season. We got a break that Michael Parkhash doesn't play. He's a great, great uh, defender, but also he starts a lot of their attacks with his feet. So uh, you, you get lucky in some ways with the, the, the schedule and how it hits you and when you get teams at certain times. And you have to take advantage of it on nights like tonight because, um, you know, we were able to, to jump on them and, and get the, the three goals. Yeah, sure. 27th minute, Fernando and Dodson first time. Yeah. Pretty big build up. Yeah. And with a pretty big save on the header. Yeah. Uh, you know, 15 minutes later, you got the lead and kind of a stranglehold in the game. How big was that to keep momentum? You guys had a couple chances after that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, a turning point. We, we, we had a couple, uh, we dodged a couple bullets. Like you're going to uh, against any good team. You know, um, I thought, you know, Ethan Finley had a couple runs at us. Um, it was a handful. Schoenfield got on, on the end of a couple crosses. So, um, you know, Brian Sylvester made a few saves for us. We made a couple of late last second tackles. And, you know, it's a game of uh, winning the battle in, in each box, offensively and defensively. And, and I think we did that tonight. But you're right, you know, uh, in, in one end, Fernando, we lose him because he gets he gets kicked in the box. They go down, they almost actually score. And we're able to, to keep them off the board and, and kind of get a hold of the game and, and eventually create the goal. So, again, tough to lose Fernando early. But uh, at the same time, uh, CJ came on and, and gave us life. Jim, do you have any more on Fernando's injury? Nothing yet. Um, I don't think it's anything. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not not really sure. I don't know if he rolled it. I think he, I, he just said he got kicked hard um, and wasn't able to keep going. He tried to push through it, but it was just too uh, too painful. So I mean, I, he's he's tough. So I, I I'd imagine it was you know pretty significant for him to to go out of the game. Yeah. Any of these no. local three nothing? Is it? Do do you feel really good, or do you are you already on the next game? Yeah, I'm happy that that we were able to to get the second goal. You know, that's what we talked about at halftime. This this is going to be a game that's going to need a second goal because they're going to keep coming. Kai's going to come off the bench. They have you know, Johnny can come off. Jimenez can come off. They have they had some weapons that I was worried about on the bench. So I thought it would take a second goal. Um, credit to our. Our back four did a great job keeping the zero. Uh, I thought every one of them across the board was was excellent. Um, obviously, it's a team uh, defending. You know, it starts with our midfield doing a good job. Brian Carroll quietly had a great game. Vincent had a great game, and Chaco Maidana in in possession was unbelievable for us. Um, he sees things that that other players don't. So again, he's that special guy. He has a special left foot. I can't teach it. I can't coach that. You either have it or you don't. Um, was there maybe something extra in the game with him playing against Higuain? Maybe there's something to that, you know, wanting to, to step his game up and, and, and show. Um, I know they have a relationship, so um, to, to do his best in that one was uh, was big. But he was special tonight as well. You could go through every guy, though, and they check off a lot of positive boxes. Um, but, yeah, um, it's nice to, to get that second goal. And then the third one, obviously, is good. I still never felt safe, but uh, happy that we kept the zero. So. Uh, much has been made about Fabinho's play, but also Shane Williams has been doing very well. And yes. obviously the run tonight has been getting forward very well. Yeah. How do you rotate and deal with those, those yeah. fullbacks now, uh, assuming Ray comes back yeah. to health? Yeah, yeah Ray's, is, Ray's in that uh, stage where he probably could have played tonight. He's got that last 5% of that ankle to bounce back. He's close. Um, you know, with the other two playing well, it, it maybe buys you a, a day or two. The last thing I wanted to do is throw Ray out there in a situation where you know, he, he, he rolls it again and, and we're chasing it again. So to have three good fullbacks is a, a great thing. Um, you know, we'll see, we'll evaluate how guys got through tonight and we'll, we'll make the, the best decision for, for New York City FC. I had to take this though. I, we're not in a, a situation where I can rotate and rest and, and, set, and hold guys out. We need three points. You know, we have to have three points at home tonight and it is going to be game by game. Um, we'll, we'll, Obviously, now I'll start to talk about New York City, uh, a dangerous team still, a very dangerous team that, that's going to come in here. And yes, we'll have uh, have played on the Wednesday. But um, again, I think if we handle our recovery, we, we, we handle the massages, guys are taking care of themselves, they get the proper sleep like we have on our program, I think that they can bounce back quick. Um, is there a change or two? Possibly. Um, and we'll see how, uh, how it goes. Uh, you talked yesterday about you know how Columbus likes to split the center backs, get yeah. the full backs up and drop the six or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you guys did a good job of combating that and not really letting them get into that so much? Yeah, I think um, they – they still they still did it tonight. Um, obviously, with Michael in there, it's a, it's more comfortable. Uh, I thought the the young kid did well for his first game, a rookie uh, kid that I actually liked at the combine a lot. Um, but at the same time, uh, Michael is is one of the best passers in our in our league. So 
Um, our plan, you know, going into it was when they do split the center backs off goal kicks um, to have Fernando pick up high, which is 30 yards from goal, but let the let the center backs have it where they were because Michael wasn't in the game. You know, make them be the ones that make the game. What what Greg wants you to do is have some one guy run at them, and then it's kind of a chain reaction of if one's late, they pick you apart, and they're they're darn good at it. Um, they still did it to us several times. Um, those times they bait you into pressure, uh, and then the next guy's late, and then you know it's a chain reaction all the way down the field, and the next thing you know they're getting a tap in, and your goal that's happened to us before. So, um, you know, it was it was good of us to stay and make their center backs try to beat us. They still got at us a few times. Um, we dodged a bullet or two, but uh, you know that's a very good team, and they're going to be uh, competing for the the top of the Eastern Conference for sure. Um, do you feel like you know, at the beginning of the season you talked a lot about the red card injuries yeah. hurting the consistency, but it seems like it's allowed you to find guys who are providing depth, Sapong, Marquez. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. Yeah, we're, we're finding out a lot about guys. Even the minutes that, that Ayuk and, and Pfeffer give us in that game tonight, not a, not big minutes in terms of the, the, the amount of them, but you know the little plays to kill off the game that Ayuk makes and, and for an 18-year-old kid to not be – selfish and go to goal by himself and pull it back and, and waste another two minutes. Those are those are smart plays, and you only learn them uh, being in those games. He still has some things to learn defensively. He gets turned the wrong way a couple times, but he's 18 years old, uh, did a good job. Pfeffer almost gets us a fourth goal. I to told him to, to sit next to BC, listen to him. Uh, Vincent had a little knock on his foot. But those are big minutes for him to go into. Um, and after being unfortunate last game, um, for him to bounce back, that goes a long way for, for his confidence. But yeah, we've had guys emerge. We, because we had to throw guys into situations maybe a little earlier than we wanted to, they're, they're, it's only going to benefit the team in the long run. And we have seen, uh, we've played a lot of guys, you know, and a guy like even a Richie Marquez now who got thrown in in a situation where I was terrified for him to get thrown in and have your first minutes against Josie and Giovinco. Um, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Uh, the kids uh, comes from Division Three, but he's proof that it doesn't matter uh, where you come from if you can play in this league and if you can play this game, um, you'll rise to the top. And he's he had a sink or swim moment where he could have gone either way, and now he's 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 taking it and he's running with it. So his play again tonight was uh, was exceptional. David, one more. You have talked about Brian Carroll playing well. That's a few um, good games in yeah. for him now. Yeah. Games. What can you say about the lift he's given you? Yeah, I'm going to get on for a couple bad passes but he, that he had early on. But listen, he played. He put out a ton of fires tonight. Um, just being a calming presence in there, uh, winning the battles. These guys that have been through 300 of these things uh, are uh, a select few players can, can, can have that on their, on their resume. So he knows never to get too high, never to get through too low in the course of 90 minutes. He calmed us down a lot. The effort that he put in running back, tracking back 65, 70 yards, um, it's ingrained in him. That's that's what he's about. He's a winner. He's a uh, a man, and and again, he's a guy that does so many of the little things that don't show up in the in the stat sheet. He's not going to get the accolades. You know, all the guys who score will get the credit and all that. But BC does his job quietly. He has, you know, since I used to play against him a long time ago. It's the same with Brian. Every game, you know, he brings it, and he brings a consistency that um, makes you sleep at night easier as a coach. Thanks, sir. Good. Thank you.